Hello friends, welcome to this session where we will uh, discuss how to prepare an SOP, a statement of uh, purpose. Now once you receive an interview call, majority of the B schools will ask you to fill up a form. They will give you a format and this will be in two ways. One, they will give you specific questions. For example, what is your biggest achievement in life so far? Why do you want to do management? Why do you want to join our uh, B school? So uh, questions like that. The other popular format is where the institute will give you guidelines and will tell you uh, to submit a statement of purpose uh, in about 500 words, 600 words, 800 words and so on. The SOP format of IAM Bangalore is a beautiful one because it clearly explains what an SOP is. So let us use that format to understand what is SOP and then you can use that format broadly, a guideline for doing your SOP, be it for whichever B school. So let us take a look at this. The guideline says, prepare a short essay of 600 words on yourselves. You may wish to talk about your background significant events, achievements, experience at your workplace, extracurricular activities, relationship with friends and family, career plan and how the MBA program from IM Bangalore fits into your dreams and ambitions. Please make sure your essay forms a coherent. So if you look at this guideline which we can adopt for uh, preparing SOPs to other B schools also if they provide you with an open-ended kind of a a guideline saying that uh, write an essay in about 500 uh, to 800 words. If you look at this uh, guideline, uh, we can split it into uh, two parts. The first four lines talks about your uh, present and the past. What are you today and what have you done so far in life? The next couple of lines talks about your future. Specifically, what are your career goals? Point number one. Point number two, how will an MBA or a management degree help you to reach your career goals? Point number three, okay, we understand that you want to do an MBA, but why from this particular institute? Let us look at the two parts of the SOP uh, separately. Let us right now focus on the first part, which is your life story so far. And I'm emphasizing on the word story. So how do we do our SOP on part one? Now there is no standard format on how to start in multiple ways. For example, you can start by saying what are you doing right now or you can talk about what your value systems are, what kind of a person are you, what are your principles. You can go on to talk about your academics, you can talk about what happened in school and college within the classroom and outside the classroom in terms of events and activities that you did, competitions if you participated in. If you won prizes, good enough, uh, add that also, but even otherwise uh, talk about the activities that uh, you did in school and college, you talk about your hobbies, you talk about your uh, extracurricular activities, you talk about your achievements. And when I say achievements, not just academics, I'm talking about achievements in life, which is open-ended, it can be related to uh, your academics, can be related to sports, arts, uh, cultural activities, it can be uh, in terms of organizing things, work you have done in the society, your skills, your uh, strengths, uh, if you have work experience then you talk about your work experience, if you have done uh, volunteering uh, in school college, uh, talk about that also. You talk about your life experiences in school, college, in the society, maybe at home, within the family, in the community. Uh, you can also talk about your contributions at work, your life situations at work. You stepped in and uh, took a leadership role or a lead role or took an initiative to do things. So there are a lot of things to talk about, isn't it? Because it's your life history. Now you want to put it into a coherent whole. Remember what I am Bangalore said, everything should fit in properly into a coherent whole. It's like you sitting down and telling your friend about your life in brief, very brief. Okay, I understand you want additional sheets, right? I mean, like the way you would write an examination. No, no, not possible because the profs are going to read your SOP and they're going to read hundreds of SOPs of people who have been shortlisted to the B school. So please do not give them a headache. That's not the idea. So here I am Bangalore is saying 600 words. If that is not mentioned, 
maximum maximum two pages is uh, what you go into to write your SOP max. One and a half pages is good enough. And when you present your life story, remember you're going for selection to a management institute, which is a two year training as a stepping stone into your managerial career. So think about what are the qualities of a manager and then try and connect to those qualities, at least some of them with what are the things that have happened in life so far. I hope you got the point. So what are the qualities of a manager? We can go on and on and on, isn't it? For example, we'll uh, talk about our organizing uh, capabilities. We talk about planning and then executing uh, the plan to perfection. We talk about mentoring our uh, team or being a good team leader and then leading them to success. So we'll talk about uh, team skills. We talk about managing uh, resources. Now, when we talk about managing resources, what are the resources that typically we have or we come across in management, not just in companies, usually when we have to manage things, even at home, what are the things that we come across? A lot of uh, words starting with M. We talk about money, connect that to finance. We talk about men or people, that means HR. We talk about machines, processes. We talk about project management. We talk about operations, isn't it? We talk about materials management. We talk about reaching out to our customers, marketing and more. So a lot of these management uh, skills are uh, required to manage resources. We also talk about leadership skills. We talk about the ability to innovate. So a lot of skills that we can keep going on and on. You know how it is. So, can we relate to some of these skills with whatever we have done in life so far? Some of you are going to be very different and say that, you know, I don't think that I have too many things to say. I've heard a lot of students say that, sir, I have had a very simple life so far. I haven't done great things in school or college. Or I was generally an introvert or I was not into a lot of activities. So what do I do? small things you can say. For example, let us talk about team skills. Each of the skills that you're going to put in your SOP, you need to substantiate extremely important with examples when we come to the interview stage, which we will talk about in great detail as we go through the multiple videos on interviews which are going to come up. So when we talk about, let us say, a skill like team skills. Usually people with work experience and will uh, talk about what they have uh, done in their organization. Well then good, that's fine. Or uh, people with no work experience will uh, talk about the projects that they have done uh, in their uh, college. Now let us take a different turn here. For example, let us say you play basketball, you play football. Aren't you a team player? You have team skills, isn't it? Again, let us take a much more simpler example. You sing in the church choir, in the community, you have team skills, the ability to innovate. Suppose if you have participated in organizing college fests or events in college and school or in organizations in companies, then you would think about innovating, isn't it? You want more college students to come for the college fest. So you will try and do things to attract more people. You will put in newer variety of programs, bringing in new innovative items into the whole program schedule. You will have innovations in the way you plan out things and present things. Good enough. Or say you're part of the college dance team and for your choreo video presentations, wouldn't you innovate? Innovation skills. Because you need to manage there again, you need to manage your costume, material, the team, money, doing things to perfection, time management. So again, management skills come into play, even if they are small things. So again, the issue is prioritize. If you have bigger things to say, say that. But we have done enough things in our life. So no worries that covering 500, 600, 800 words is not an issue. That is not the point. How do you do it effectively? Because you need to sell your candidature and sell it well vis-a-vis -vis the other candidates who are vying for that particular B-School. They are your competition, which means that every line that you write, you need to sell yourself. Now, how do we do that? We'll come to that. This being your life story, you have a lot of points, a lot of things, I mean, small, small things to much bigger things that you can link to the guidelines that the institute has given you, if you think about it. Yes, you have. Now, as I said, 
suppose you were telling your life story and that two pertinent points relating to something that you can link to management skills and how did it look like think over it the point i'm making is for example say you're going for an audition for a movie as an actor you are trying for a role as an actor then what are the skills that you would then be trying to put forth to the people who are trying to evaluate you would you talk about your academics first would you talk about your prowess in football there no there you are talking about your acting skills and you will try and talk about even the small play that you participated in in your early school days isn't it at the same time suppose if you are going for uh, uh, cricket team selection of your uh, district and you are asked to fill up a form first uh, before uh, they ask you to do the trials then in the form what are the things that you talk about would you then talk about your acting skills there or your academics no you will talk about your cricket skills so similarly here we are talking about management uh, skills and we don't have to think about great management skills because you are going into a two year training program in the b school where you are going to get a thorough grounding on all facets of management all functions of management but here we are trying to form a small link about your capabilities your interests in moving into the area of management by talking about your story the first step is to start noting down points think about all the possible points relating to your life story which you would be able to present convincingly to a b school points which are relevant for a selection to the b school where the props would be interested in knowing more about these possibly in the interview also you would be pleasantly surprised to know that the process that you are going to go through for preparing your sop and its evaluation is a forerunner to what you are going to do in the b school for preparing your cv if you talk to your seniors in b schools and particularly the top 40 50 b schools there is a lot of focus put on cv preparation almost right from the day when you step into the b school your seniors are going to guide you on that and it will take a month a month and a half for you to crystallize on your cv i know you would be surprised when i say this because so far the way you have prepared your cv in college is something which is get, getting done in minutes isn't it how do we do that pull up a cv from one of my friends or from a senior or from somewhere change his name okay his uh, and put our uh, name in his strengths become uh, my strengths uh, his achievements become my achievement the format remains the same uh, the uh, small changes that i do would be to put in my marks maybe my uh, name of the school uh, is a different a name of the uh, college is different or whatever maybe a couple of points about my hobbies i'll probably sort of uh, put in and then change my address phone number my cv is ready that doesn't work in a b school at all and it doesn't work for preparation of your sop in all the premier b schools in india once you join the b school the summer placement selection process starts during the second term by about 4 or maximum 5 months after joining the companies will start coming to campus and would be shortlisting you and then doing the selection process for the two months of internship which will happen at the end of one year so that is why your cv making process starts almost from the first week of you landing up at the b school where your seniors would tell you how to do that and the way they do it is and once uh, why am i telling you this because once you understand this then you would understand the way in which you need to prepare an sop so how do the uh, students of the b school the uh, the first year first term uh, students how do they prepare based on the guidelines that the seniors uh, tell them they think about all possible uh, selling points which will be of interest to the recruiters who are going to come for summer placements they note down on paper on the laptop and make what is called a master cv which runs into several pages even small things that they have done in school college nothing is dismissed i mean everything is uh, put in and then they will uh, evaluate it over a period of time uh, churning and churning it multiple times to finally crystallize on the more important things and finally 
the CV is prepared, which is one page. So the entire master CV, which runs into multiple pages, is then compressed and put into one page. You don't have the scope to go beyond one page. In the IAMs, for example, or FMS, the CV format is standard. It's not like what you do in college where you come up with your own fancy design of the CV and all that. No, it doesn't happen that way. There is a particular format which is identified very easily as an IAM, Calcutta format, code code format or whatever, where only the content, the details of the student differs from CV to CV. And there's a guideline about the number of lines that you can put maximum in that one page. So the entire contents that you have thought about is then churned in your mind multiple times, discussion with seniors and discussion with your mentors in at the B school. And then multiple iterations of the CV happens, burning midnight oil seriously because you don't want to miss the opportunity to catch the attention of the big consulting firms, the investment uh, banks and the big marketing companies and all that, isn't it? And you want to be placed on day one if possible. So that kind of effort, you understand that everybody is doing it. So you also join the bandwagon and the CV is done. Now, if you pick up the finalized or crystallized the CV of the B school student, and suppose if this is the CV and you fold it into two parts like this, okay? into two parts like this and then I tear the CV here down the middle vertically and throw the right side away. This part I throw which means that only this part remains. If I read the half the bit of the CV that I have in my hand, I would be able to get a complete profile of the candidate because what will be listed here would be the essential things. And then it goes on to the further part of the sentence into the page which I have thrown away by explaining in a few words, maybe three, four, five words about what that particular is all about. No big explanations, descriptions because they don't have the space. So one selling point in one line and it will start with power words. Organized, led, managed, coordinated, that kind of thing. So that is the way the things are done at the B school. One page is what you have here. SOP 600 words is what you have. So how do you start? You think over all the kind of points that you would like to put in anything which comes up, which you think it is relevant, at least a bit relevant. Put that down. Don't discard it at the start. Put that down, which would go into pages possibly. No description, just points. We will decide on which are the points to retain and which ones to discard and then we will develop that into statements. But right now points, then go through the points in detail and then some of the points would appear to be more important than the others. Think it over in your mind, connect them to the management skills that you would be able to talk about based on the shortlisted points and how well it looks for the professor who is going to read the SOP. For example, what you have done at college level is more important than what you have done at the department level. What you have done at an intercollegiate level is more important than what you have done at the college level. What you have done at the district level is possibly more important than what you have done at the intercollegiate level unless it's a big national level intercollegiate festival and all that and think over these points and finalize. SOP should cover not just the serious stuff like your academics and work experience and all that. Those are important, but it should also present a whole, some picture about yourself. So you talk about your interests, you talk about your hobbies, extracurricular activities. I've listed a lot of things uh, earlier, like your uh, life situations and challenges you have faced and how you manage them. For example, stepping in to do things in an emergency, stepping in to take the lead in certain situations. So. All these things are very relevant. A couple of very, very important points, my friends. One, do not copy an SOP. Never copy an SOP. You will find a lot of SOP formats on the net. Never copy. Second, don't let chat GPT write out your SOP. The reason is, all these top-notch B schools are smart enough. They use plagiarism software. They can easily identify this. They use it regularly. It's not a new thing. 
they have been using it for years to evaluate assignments for example which are given to the students there are several cases the iams for example and same with a lot of the other b schools where students particularly first year students have been asked to repeat a paper because of plagiarism issues why first year students because in the first couple of terms itself people would know hard facts of life at a b school and they wouldn't dare to do it beyond that so that is why it's not an issue by the time they come into the second year they're very very careful because the placements are going to come up and there have been extreme situations where students have been asked to repeat a year so never go into this particularly if you are going for some of the very good b schools there is this tendency that okay we are going into the iams or iaft or xlri or fms so our sop needs to look very good so please give me a format sir or uh, they'll search for a recommended format from somebody or they will get it written by somebody and it is a problem because when you get it written by somebody then you don't know the source from where he has taken and you will get caught on the wrong foot never do it see it is your life story you know it better than anybody use very simple language to write that no bombastic sounding words no fancy showing off kind of stuff simple words with clarity which will not give the props a headache if you are a person who is capable or uh, has the interest to learn things on your own that's a winning point that's a huge point so put that in as part of the sop tt to do things on your own learn and apply things is something that we need to do in managerial life because you come across a situation or issue or a problem and there are several instances where you need to learn things and apply them in the context of your work environment for example uh, techies from it companies would know what i'm talking about because while you are in your project there are situations where some of the stuff you need to uh, use or know were not taught as part of the training program at the it company but you need to learn them on your own and apply so those kind of things in your life not just in working environment in life things which you have learned mention that your worry may be that you don't have a certificate not an issue because what is important is whether you know what you're talking about the particular topic or the subject or the stuff that you're talking about do you know irrespective of whether you learned it on your own or whether you went through a course and you got a certificate there's no point saying that i learned this and i got a certificate but please don't ask me any questions so learning things ability to learn on your own or the willingness to adapt is a winning point you can use anecdotes you can tell your story or incidents from your life you can use quotations there are a lot of students who start the sop with a flourish with a quotation no harm in doing that let me give you an example this is from an actual sop which was submitted by a student and this is the first iteration so all these things which i am showing you about some of the mistakes that we make in an sop are first time iterations from students and then they'll go through multiple iterations to prepare their sop particularly if they're going into the top notch institutes so here is the quotation to start an sop to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought tennyson could not have put it better it is my personal belief that there is no substitute to a good education no harm in saying this excellent quotation very famous one but it should be substantiated by what you have done in your life so far that is the major thing the prof at the b school is not going to stand up with folded hands saying that oh wonderful quotation from tennyson wordsworth whatever no it's good that you have made a point here it's a telling point it talks about what kind of a person you are what is your philosophy of life approach to life perfect provided you are able to then go on and substantiate that this this quotation personifies the kind of person that you are got it now while we are talking about how to write an sop let us also put in some slides about how not to write an sop by giving you instances these are actual instances of first time iteration trials by uh, students which will then give you an idea about some of the pitfalls that you should avoid while preparing your sop here somebody has started with a kind of an emotional touch a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step it all began in my life 
with such a single step holding my father's hand. Does it convey anything? What that uh, step was? No. Another one. Right from my school days, I had this burning desire to do management. Oh really? Then explain how that burning desire came in within you. Then talk about what kindled that desire in you. Is it something that you have read, something that you came across, something that uh, somebody told you, maybe your uh, in some of your family members or somebody who is right now in management or your seniors, something that you came across in uh, social media. Talk about that. Not in great detail. All those things, maybe maximum one or two lines. When you talk about a story or an incident from your life, you don't have too much space to write, isn't it? So put everything in a nutshell and say things in one, two or maximum three sentences, max. Look at this one. Again, from an SOP first iteration. Life to me is a golden opportunity to learn and make contributions to the world. Isn't it true for all of us? the opportunity to learn and then make contributions to the world. It ushers in various learning avenues through observation. So we're now getting into philosophy. A child observes, learns from and mimics her mother, now substantiating the philosophy. Similarly, we are also in a continuous learning and application process. It is important that we observe and absorb each moment in our life as long as it adds knowledge which would help us make informed decisions. Take a deep breath, pause. Because it sounds like some of those great knowledge gurus who kindle the, the inner light within you of uh, knowledge and understanding the world and all that. But is that the path that this candidate is going to? He's writing an SOP for a management institute. So all these kind of generalized and what we call as the motherly statements are not going to make any effect. Once we prepare, here's the usual problem that people with work experience have. Um, usually techies use uh, techie language or they expect that the profs who are reading the SOP would know about their organization and their work. Let's read through this. The question was, briefly describe your job responsibilities, achievements and failures. Responsibilities. The candidate is writing. To address the queries or issues which our client may have while operating our product at their site. What product? Not specified. What kind of issues? When an issue is reported, I understand the issue and ask for data required to reproduce the same at our base environment. What do you mean by base environment? The profs are not supposed to know this. Don't use techie language. Put it in very simple terms so that a layman who is reading it should understand. Remember that uh, IAM CV or the top B school CV which we tore into half. Still we could understand what the profile of the candidate was. That is the idea. Put it in simple language. Then I assign the concerned platform team for fixing the issue and get a schedule from them. Afterwards, I communicate the same schedule to the client after including the time required for testing. I understand what he is talking about. The client has an issue and what does he do to tackle that with the help of his team? Give the details. Put it in single, simple language and say what, is, what are the kind of issues that you face and how you tackle them. Bring forth the kind of skills that you have to tackle them. How do you coordinate with your team members? You said analyze data. So what kind of tools do you use to analyze the data? How do you ensure that the client is satisfied in the quickest possible time? The problem is solved in the quickest possible time. Mention those things. Now coming to his achievements, I along with my team had completed a major client requirement in banking domain. What kind of requirement was that? What are the product or service that you developed? You tried to customize for the banking client. The project cost was around 243 lakh. Whether it is 2430 lakhs or whether it is 50,000 crores doesn't make a difference. Unless you specify what you have done. It was a challenging and complex requirement as it required a major enhancement in our product which was already customized. That is the point. Please mention what was the challenge, what was the complexity and how you tackled it. That will bring forth your skills, isn't it? It also involved working with a foreign team. I like this statement with the possibility. Okay, not the statement, but the possibility where you say that you work with a foreign team, which was in UK. I had the opportunity to learn from their work culture also, less stress and more organized than us. Would you say that? Seriously? Never, ever, ever, ever. And I can add a lot more hours. Talk negatively about the process through which you have come through. 
be it your home be it your school be it your college be it your society be it your friends be it your work environment always talk positive present the positive things never say negative things you say college was wonderful suppose uh, they asked you in, during the interview or you had to say some things in the sop maybe a couple of lines talk about how wonderful the college was the kind of learning environment it provided the kind of uh, knowledgeable faculty very supportive they were to make the learning easy the kind of practical environment that you had in the in the college uh, which was facilitated by events and activities put things in a very positive tone because when the process is good then the product that is you which comes through the process is also termed as good so this one is a huge huge no no what i like the possibility was the first line where you talk about the way you coordinated with teams across time zones across working uh, cultures and help to solve the problem of the client now friends this one takes the cake really seriously this happened a few years ago again first iteration for a lady who was uh, preparing her sop for iim indore and this is what she wrote as the biggest achievement in life there was this question in the form asked by i am indoor this is the answer cross my heart upon god what i'm saying is true seriously getting the right husband has is more than what i wish for in other words i couldn't do any better than this and the smiley was there in the sop would you believe it you know this happens i mean all these Well, things that uh, we talked about in the last uh, four or five slides happen either because the student is not clear about the purpose of the SOP or is not clear about how to present his winning points, his or her winning points. That is, to the admissions team. Now, the story of this particular lady has a very happy ending because she got selected to IIM Indore after she went through a proper. training on uh, writing and going through multiple iterations and then also acing the essay and the uh, interview now let us go through the process of sop preparation as i said we start with the master that is listing down all the possible points so you think about all the possible selling points from your life story take some time to think over it it will take a day or two don't discard any of the points that come up in your mind note them down and then once you have put in a maximum number of points that you've thought about then go through them evaluate them and then prioritize them some of the points are more important than the others so the lesser ones don't discard them completely keep them away we might need some of those points later on we might need those points to fill up space or probably add more points isn't it we can cut down the number of sentences with which we have written down the point shortlisted so that we can add more points and add more value to our sop so keep those points there with you now look at the shortlisted points and then write them into sentences convert ideas into sentences and be very brief when you brief then you will be able to put in more points that is the idea isn't it got it so that is the way to do it and then once you have written them down and put it in order then most likely you would find that you have exceeded the number of that you are allowed by the institute usually 500 to 800 words most likely a page a page and a half so uh, you have exceeded that space because the urge is there while we do the first iteration of the sop to put in maximum things isn't it and then explain that so what you need to do is leave enough cues for the prof the evaluator so that hopefully the prof comes back to you during the interview to ask questions based on what you have written in the sop it is like a bait particularly some of the very interesting selling points that you have use that bait reveal enough you know reveal interesting things but there is more story you know story abhi bhi baki hai and that kind of thing and where the prof might catch on to it the prof is smart so it's not that they're going to fall for the bait but then you are actually then making things smart enough for yourself by giving yourself that opportunity so be brief and 
put in more points. So look at the scope of putting in more points. Pack them into your recipe. Put them into paragraphs. So the ideas, various ideas come in paragraphs and then you put them in a kind of a sequence where they connect with each other so that the SOP forms into a wholesome story. That is what I am Bangalore said. That is what we used in our first slide, isn't it? That was the guideline with which we started off. The last sentence that I am Bangalore said was it should form a coherent whole. So whether it is for I am Bangalore or any other institute, that is how your SOP should look like. That is how your essay, uh, which you would write uh, when, uh, as part of your uh, selection process when you go for the GD and interview and essay writing process. Again, the essay should be complete, you know, when you hand it over to the prof. And we will come to the essay writing separately. Now the first iteration is done. Go through it yours. You can obviously share it with uh, people and, you know, your faculty at your coaching institute or your seniors who have gone through B schools. Uh, make them uh, do the evaluation, all those things are fine. But never ever get somebody to write your SOP. I have mentioned that before. You are going to risk your chance of a seat in a B school. Never do that. Now students also give it to a faculty in English to do the evaluation. The faculty should be aware about the selection process. The evaluation process, how an SOP is looked at by the professor. Because the faculty in English most of them would not have gone through a B school. There are um, MBA students who are faculties at coaching institutes who would understand the process because they have gone through the MBA selection process, which is extremely important because you want to get your story polished and finalized, something like the icing on the cake kind of thing, simple language. So the language and style is the final cherry on top of the icing on the cake but that will come in handy if the cake is there see when you eat the cake the cherry looks fine the cherry tastes good but the cake is sour then what is the point in having the cherry sorry to be so very basic while explaining this but this is important so the content of the sop is what is very important so go through multiple iterations get suggestions think over each word each sentence that you have written. I have shown you some samples of how not to write and I have made comments, isn't it? So likewise, be harsh on yourself and evaluate each sentence. Look at all the possible kind of questions that a faculty can ask at the time of the interview. That is why your SOP or the form that you fill up and submit to the institute once you receive a call is extremely, extremely important. The faculty who are doing the interview will have a copy of this. You need to go through each and every point in the SOP as preparation for the interview. Why do I say that? Because your SOP forms the solid foundation for three major types of questions in your interview. One, personal questions. Two, career related questions. Three, work ex related questions if you have work ex. We need to be careful in avoiding some other common errors while preparing a recipe. One, we need to be very clear. Clarity is the essence of writing an SOP. Let's look at a statement like this. Was part of the team which organized Urja during the college technical fest. Now, how would the poor professor know what Urja is? What kind of an event was that? What skills were required? What skills were made use of by you for this event? What was your role in this event? We had no idea at all. Then again, no abbreviations, no short forms, no slangs. Most common error is using cliched kind of statements or words. Avoid them. For example, I want to join a B school because I want to widen my horizon, widen my vision. What horizon, what vision? I want to uh, add on to my skills. What skills do you want to add on? I want to add on to my skills to climb the corporate ladder. Hey, where is this ladder? How many rungs does it have? Where can I climb this ladder? Where is this ladder kept? See, avoid all these kind of statements. That is why I said, when you go through the SOP, be very harsh on yourself on what you have written. Okay, the easiest thing to do is to gloss over all this and then finish off this at the earliest possible time. And most people do it at the last minute. But then this is very important. So 
never do that mistake. Don't say that I'm joining the B school to improve on my communication skills because we are not talking about joining a finishing school where they are trying to help you improve on your communication skills. We are talking about a training ground as a stepping stone to a management career. Appreciate your time. Hope my insights were valuable and you benefit from my expertise. Catch the next video in our GD interview mastery series for MBA aspirants. The link is in the description. Stay tuned for more success tips.